International Women's Day to all the ladies joining us today and all other women in the world. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mina Maina. I work with Springboard Capital and I'm in charge of customer experience. What a better way to spend your lunch hour this Wednesday afternoon than to sit, relax, and enjoy this sumptuous plate of knowledge that we have prepared for you. Today, we delve into demystifying the disparity between women and technology as we delve into our topic for the day, bridging the gap on the digital divide. As we all know, today is International Women's Day and the theme for 2023 is Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. The theme highlights the role of innovative technology in promoting gender equality and meeting the health and developmental needs of women and girls. Welcome on board. At this juncture, I'd like to introduce our shift chef. Her name is Betty Masharia. She is the customer success manager at Tarawax LLC. She has worked in Middle East, in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, as well as Asia Pacific regions. And she's the Kenyan team lead. Betty has worked in, techno in technology industry in different roles, and her experience spans different regions for well over 15 years. Betty graduated with a BSc in food, nutrition, and dietetics. And from her first internship, she found herself being drawn into the IT department and developed a curiosity of what technology can do in manufacturing and distribution, in security solutions, and thereafter built a career in business development for organizations that offer IT as a service, as a service and software as a service. Betty has managed projects in Uganda, she has sold and delivered professional partner technology-based training services. She has delivered consultancy services to startups in Kenya, in Mozambique, and in Nigeria. At the same time, she finds time to mentor university students. Betty is also a mother to two lovely boys. And during her free time, she loves taking long family road trips to discover new enchanting places. Betty Masharia, would you kindly give us your opening statements? Thank you very much, Mine. That was a lovely introduction. Um, hello, everybody. Happy lunch hour. And uh, today is middle of the week. Uh, glad to uh, be here on this um, live. And thank you very much, Springboard Capital. Uh, and Mine for the lovely introduction. Thank you very much. Yeah, today we are tackling um, women in technology. We want to see, um, first of all, to acknowledge, is there a digital gap? Is there a, a gap? Does it exist? So acknowledging is always the first step. And then from that is tackling, is there a problem? Uh, are there any gaps that exist either in the society or in the workplace? And then once those gaps are identified, how can we uh, tackle them? How can we fill those gaps? What can we do as individuals, as a community, um, as a service to our, you know, our young leaders, upcoming leaders? So I think that will be kind of the summary of what we'll discuss today. And um, thank you, Mina. Lovely. For well, Betty, is there an actual digital divide? And what is this digital divide? Yes, so let's start with uh, explaining what is digital divide. So as it says, it's a divide. It means there's a division. <laughs> so there is an equal access to digital technology. Uh, it could be within a, a community, uh, a region, countries. And what do we mean by an equal access to digital technology? It means from smartphones, gadgets, hardware, you know, for your day-to-day, -day, what you use to perform your duties, uh, internet, lack of it, or for some, 
Sometimes it's intermittent, depending on the region, on the uh, the place where you are. And then unequal access to information and technology. All that together is unequal access to digital technology. It also varies between demographies, you know, uh, between gender. You'd find uh, some gender have access to technology uh, versus others. You think of a woman in the village um, and the men around that village who would have more phones, say, let's start from there, or coins to buy data, yeah? Uh, race, it also depends on, on the race. Uh, women in different races, men in different races, everybody, <laughs> uh, depending on where you are, and then age. Uh, think of the younger generation and the older generation. There is a gap. Uh, these are unequal access to digital technology in those de demographies. Also in regions, you know, uh, developed uh, countries versus developing countries. Countries with modern information and communication technology have also, you know, uh, more advanced of those technologies compared to others. There are urban and rural divide also, you know, availability of uh, technology in different uh, regions in the urban areas compared to the rural areas. And also, if you're in the urban areas, there's also, you know, the socioeconomic status of those in the urban areas. Uh, there's also a divide there. And then finally, there's a digital divide uh, between the educated and the non-educated. Those who know where to find this um, digital technology and those that don't. To answer your question, there is a digital divide. It exists. Wow, Betty. Thank you. You have articulated that so well, and we now know where the disparity is actually occurring. Would you think there is digital access currently available across board? If not, what can we actually do about it? So across board, uh, we've talked about those demographies, yeah, and we've talked about the socioeconomic status. So um, if you think about the social divide, yes, so social circles, you'll find people kind of uh, gear or gather according to social circles because of shared interests. So um, those that are in those circles would have availability of that uh, digital technology than others, yeah? Uh, in the socioeconomic uh, status uh, and differences between those who are connected and those who are sidelined, um, it's not available across board in that social divide. Think of it uh, universally, universal access divide. So uh, people are also, uh, could I say, marginalized or some parts of the world are segregated from uh, potential of this technology internet uh, because of wars, because of literacy, politics, um, the options that are there, the disabled. So across the board, as you say, it's it's not equal uh, because of those uh, divisions that exist. Think of it uh, from a use uh, use the type of the ways that we use this technology. You know the differences in our skills, our technical and financial ability to have uh, access to that uh, to the digital options that are there, the generation gaps. Um, also ensure that or make it a place that it's not um, there's not equal access to uh, everybody. And then look at it uh, uh, from a gender angle. So there's a gender gap. Yes, say in Kenya, mobile phones are now maybe we could call it commonplace, but. Um, is there a connectivity that's rolling out equally uh, throughout uh, between the rural areas, women uh, and men? So even if we uh, as Kenya are seeing uh, mobile phones being used more and better, uh, we'd find that it's not rolling out equally between uh, the different, uh, the, the male, female, the gender. Um, and then also the quality of use. So what kind of um, ways are we using this uh, technology? If it's available, am I using it to its full extent or just a little bit of it? So I could also say this is, if I could call it technology discrimination, where maybe there's lack of exposure that uh, people don't know what exists, what options lie for them. Uh, let's think of it from that gender angle. Um, in terms of technology, uh, do women know what exists? Do they know the opportunities uh, that exist? Uh, are they exposed to them? 
So we could be saying that it's not available, but maybe it's just that exposure that they're not exposed to it. And then on the workplace, um, is technology a need or is it uh, seen as a working tool? Yeah. So look at it from organizational perspective. Uh, different organizations will use technology differently. Government, compare government and a corporate, yeah go into a government office. I think we are now much better than we used to be where you go to a government office and there are just files and papers all around. Is it easing their, their jobs? Uh, uh, is, is there equality in the, in the way um, uh, these corporates are uh, giving access to technology to the different workforce? Yeah? Um, hospitals, schools, uh, between startups, uh, startups like uh, women-led uh, startups, do they have access to that technology? Can they work better? Uh, we are talking about micro entrepreneurs and uh, ensuring that they are progressing. We fund them, but do they have access to that technology? So availability across the board is not equal. Um, I think you asked me what can be done. And I think it's, it's, it's three things, exposure, opportunity, and support. So giving access to technology, start from the from schools, from the young age, you know, exposing those children to technology. Um, in, in school, do we know what, when you ask uh, someone in school, what are you going to be when you grow up? And, you know, the boys will say a pilot, uh, whatever, and the girls will say a teacher. <laughs> that's that's how we grew up. That's That's how it all started. Do we know from a young age the options that are available, that technology is not hard boys thing can it also be a girl's thing you know how do you enhance that from the young age uh exposing and giving them that opportunity and supporting them digital literacy uh between genders as i talked about the woman in the village digital literacy teachers in schools digital lit literacy leaders our government officials literacy there uh, uh, and then information on the different types technology options that exist and career options that exist. So I think um, that there's a divide. It's not available across board and that's how we could maybe support. Awesome. We have seen that there are gaps. That's a fact, yes. What, are, what is the impact of these identified gaps and the barriers that you have actually put across? Once we have identified them, what can we do to bridge this gap? So uh, the impact leads to one word, inequality. It's inequality across board. So those who are exposed to resources have, um, you know, they are exposed to more uh, information. They are more informed than others. They get more opportunities because they are exposed to those resources. They know where to get those opportunities. Um, inequality, again, that's another impact in income levels. Uh, there, there definitely exists economic inequality. Um, we talked about that micro enterprise. Say she's, she's starting or uh, this is a women's group and they want to sell something, but then they don't have the technology to monitor those sales, to see what, you know, how they are performing. Uh, it's just maybe guesswork or written down on paper. So compare that one with another micro enterprise that has access to that uh, technology. Of course, uh, the two will be performing very differently. Um, for those who have been exposed to these resources and have gotten careers or have seen opportunities, like uh, we are seeing many young Kenyans doing uh, the gig economy, you know, they're having gigs, working late at night, uh, working on reports, working on um, proposals that they have been given uh, to work on by a company, say, in the US. Compare that person with someone else who is stomaching day to day and knocking on doors. There's a, a same uh, youth who's working at night on different uh, proposals being paid for that uh, per day or per hour. And then during the day they're stomaching or the one who's stomaching full time, but then, um, you know, has nothing is begging. So you can see the disparities that, uh, that exist with those who are exposed and those who are not exposed. And then restri restrictions. So social exclusion from projects from a community level. Uh, if there are communities that have, um, that have exposed maybe the women in these communities into um, 
technology. Uh, they have options uh, down at that level. Uh, they are inclusive in terms of gender on projects. Those will have more women included in social projects, um, politics, uh, careers, investment opportunities compared to others. Also, uh, um, you know, rights, knowing our rights as a, as a population, you know, uh, if, if we don't know our rights, then we are bullied, we are taken advantage of. So uh, the girl, the girl who's not exposed out there to uh, technology, she doesn't know her rights. She thinks anybody could bully her or say anything uh, to her, or she doesn't know the right that she could get some of these jobs compared to her brother or her cousins. Yeah. And then lack of representation, either politically, uh, at a community level, and in the industry. So the impact is if we are not represented, if the woman is not represented uh, politically in the community level and in the industry, then the opportunities will never come up uh, for them. Um, what can be done? Number one, uh, infrastructure. Uh, investment, investing in our infrastructure, making sure there's uh, available internet from the grassroots all the way, uh, connectivity, interconnectivity, Electricity, let's go there. Yes, we are always complaining about that one. Corporation, um, if it is affordable, if it is present, then you could, uh, you know, you could have more options into um, uh, maybe going online or going to cyber cafes, you know, just that infrastructure. And then promoting technology as a tool to development um, in communities, you know, uh, it's not a luxury. It could be a tool to developing uh, communities having that civil education and that exposure to the communities. Um, what are the options that lie uh, from the school level? We talked about the schools and letting um, girls know that they can go into technology. So uh, from a school level, that exposure, but also for the ones that have gone to school and are maybe trying to start up a business, digital literacy, uh, exposing them to that. So technology is a need and not a luxury right now, I think. Um, if everything was made uh, affordable, it is a tool that could bring economic value to more. And then affordability of everything from the hardware we talked about, the software we talked about, the electricity itself um, would also maybe encourage more uh, more um, you know, equality amongst everybody and have a greater impact to more people. Awesome. You have pointed as simple things as electricity. Just that. Imagine. If we could just bridge that gap, then we would be, I'm sure we would be somewhere. So Betty, who are these key players in this digital gender divide that we're experiencing? And what would you think they can do or act differently to ensure this digital gap is not there? So the key players... Um... Uh, we talked, let's talk from the grassroots uh, level uh, to ensure gender equity. First of all, let's talk about gender equity. So what does equity mean? You're, you're enhancing or you're bringing up some, somebody from the point that they are not able you know, uh, to bring themselves up. So if you look at the inequalities that exist, some people have um, you know, um, more exposure than others. Though are, some people are just born lucky, <laughs> others were born in the right uh, economic status, others were just born, uh, you know, by their gender, they just get, uh, you know, opportunities compared to others because of our culture that um, you know, women should be at home or men should, should, should work. So from that grassroots level, how can we raise people up, either from the age that they are, because at... Uh, the older you are, the more exposed you are compared to the child in school um, or from uh, economic status. Maybe you've already started working and then now to the to the older generation, how can we uh, support them? So starting with the civil societies, those organizations that are working on the ground, you know, um, helping communities in different ways, health, um, you know, micro entrepreneur grants of funding, uh, digital rights groups can advocate for policies and programs that would address the 
digital gender divide and promote support for women uh, literacy skills. Um, governments, we talked about the governments uh, working on infrastructure. Yeah, we always say, don't ask the government for everything. We can also do something ourselves. But how do you do something if there's no infrastructure, you know, ensuring that connectivity? Uh, funding um, community projects. And this is across board because we talked about rural and urban. It's very unequal. If we could go to uh, each uh, county and promote each county, put that infrastructure in there and have uh, you know policies that are promoting literacy and skill programs, um, gender inclusion into activities, uh, TVETs, uh, in the TVETs, or do, are they are they well funded? Do they have some of these technology resources in there? Um, and are we promoting girls into the STEM, uh, um, you know, direction? Um, and then corporates and nonprofits uh, having CSR projects to promote uh, women. Uh, in business skills, funding micro enterprises, uh, offering digital literacy, informing about gender inclusivity and options that are available uh, out there. And then at the workplace, being an equal opportunity employer, you've heard of that. It's not just a uh, three words that just hung in there. It's actually doing that, being an equal uh, opportunity employer, engaging students, maybe who are looking for careers, going out to talk to them, giving them the career options that are available because sometimes you're in school, yeah, you're learning, but you don't know what's available out there. Where do you find that information? Where are the resources? So um, I think corporates should also make an effort to go out, reach out and, uh, show these students what uh, opportunities are available. And then upskilling within the organization. So someone has come in, maybe was never exposed to these um, digital skills, but is capable. But if they just stay in one department and are not being helped to be upskilled, they could be the future CEO of that organization. So uh, within the organization, helping um, to train your own staff and also to, uh, you know, being equal in, who is getting some of these opportunities in that organization. We find and we know that uh, the women will make, you know, get these opportunities as much as the men or even salary-wise. Are they being paid equally? Uh, are they given, being given the tools uh, equally? Um, so at the corporate level, we also need to have that inclusivity. And then um, also uh, having values, you know, uh, like the organization I'm working with, we sat down all of us and we talked about our values. We talked about how can we, you know, make everybody, how can we have a, a uni unified culture? What is our culture? Who are we? And we thought it through together and we came up with our values. And we all said, yeah, actually, that is us, you see, involving everybody um, uh, into those activities. And then education. Start with the teachers, make them literate in digital skills, then they'll do the same uh, to the, st the students. They'll have uh, STEM activities. STEM is science, te um, science technology, um, uh, engineering, and mathematics. Um, if you can involve them uh, in that, they can also do the same uh, to the students. You know, activities in school, having science and tech clubs, exposing girls to technology options. Um, those are the things that. Um, those are the key players that could ensure gender equity. Awesome. And our challenge today to all our listeners and everyone else that will come across this knowledge sharing space today is that we can all do something to ensure we are bridging this gap. Like you have said, from CSR, from, from the ground when we are learning, from the students at, at primary level and whatever, from up to the government level. And since we may not be the government, but there is something that you can actually do. There is the little that you can do in the space that you are at. So we cannot say we will wait for the government to ensure that this theme of digital has been rolled out to everyone. We must do something at our different levels. And so, um, Betty, would you say there are gender specific digital risks that are bound? What can we do to identify them? And what can we do to actually mitigate them? Yes, there are digital uh, risks that are bound. Uh, digital risks uh, from our children, you know, what are they being exposed to, uh, you know, digitally, to uh, teenage girls, 
or boys also. Uh, I'm a mom of boys actually. <laughs> um, and I'm always protecting them onto what they're exposed to. I'm, I'm always locking my phone. And I mean, locking, not locking, but um, you know, making sure that they are opening the right apps, downloading the right, right apps, getting notifications. That's of a protection from a mom's perspective. But then again, it's because there are risks out there. There are terrible risks and um, things that you don't want uh, your children or girls or anybody to be exposed to. Women in particular are more vulnerable to online harassment and abuse and cyber stalking. We've seen it, we've seen it. Just post a picture of how you're dressed and yeah, a charade continues. Other risks would be cyber bullying, uh, identity theft, online fraud. That happens to most of us, many of us, yeah? This risk can be very harmful. Um, and to women, they can have long lasting consequences on their personal and professional lives. So uh, we need to identify and mitigate uh, those gender specific digital risks and follow and, and having some actions that can be taken. So number one would be raising awareness, education and awareness uh, campaigns to help women to understand the risks that they are facing online or they could face online and how to protect themselves, not to find themselves in that situation, then later they are depressed and they didn't know and you know all that. So just making sure that there's awareness from the scratch, from the get-go. And then promoting digital uh, literacy and skills, providing women with digital literacy and skills, training to help them understand how to use uh, digital technologies safely and securely, and then also developing gender uh, responsive policies and programs. Again, uh, calling on the government and organizations uh, that have this you know, ability to develop policies and programs that are designed to address the specific skills and risks and challenges that women would face online. Uh, including harassment and abuse, and then providing support uh, to victims, you know, counseling for those who have gone through it. Yeah, you could be exposed, you could have that awareness, uh, you could know what would happen to you, and then finally it happens and, whoa, you know, you go into depression. So supporting uh, them, uh, counseling within the organization also, you know, ensuring that everybody is protected and you're, you know, keeping an eye on everybody. And if you notice somebody is maybe facing some form of online uh, or digital based um, abuse, protecting them and offering them that support. So, um, and then also having a culture, all of us having a culture, all of us, you know, having a culture of respect. You don't just always see something online and you're forced to say something bad to that person. Why would you do that? You know, think of yourself, put yourself in those shoes. Um, it wouldn't be fair. Think of it being your sister, it being your cousin, it being your child, you know? Uh, so if you're bullying somebody else, also think of, of, of the person that you're bullying and put yourself in those shoes. So having that culture of respect and online civility, being civil uh, would help. Awesome. We have several questions on the chat and uh, on the comments, but I'll ask the ones that you have not touched on, on your talk. So one is from Dennis. He asks, how can we measure the impact of efforts to bridge the digital divide? And what metrics should we use to evaluate progress? Well, that's a very broad question because uh, impact, is it at community level? Is it at school level? Uh, is it impact of maybe um, projects that are happening, women projects? So if you think of it uh, in that general level, then think of the way we do, um, uh, what do we call it? Um, account the count of total people in the country and sometimes we are checking what are your economic status do you on a boat <laughs> etc uh, but if we could do the same thing and do a general assessment what are the micro enterprises what uh, tools do they have how many are they in kenya how many are women led how many are progressing what's making those that are doing better than others uh uh, function better. So it's having that kind of sensors or that kind of research which can be done, it's possible. Uh, and that way we would see um, those that are impacted by technology versus those that, that are not. At a school level, uh, where are our kids going? Which schools are doing better than others? Is it because they have technology? Is it not because of 
technology. So just having that research would definitely come up with metrics, would definitely come up with percentages and uh, would give us a broad picture of what's on the ground, what's happening and why are some doing better than others and how can we help those that are not. I hope I've answered that question. Okay, if not, we will, you will tell us how to reach us so we can come back to you and ask you the questions. So you're getting comments that it is a very timely discussion. It is a great topic. So thank you so much for taking us through demystifying the, the, the gap we are actually experiencing. So Betty, how can we reach you? Well, um, I'm on LinkedIn uh, as Betty, uh, Betty Mataria. You can just search for me. Um, I am, uh, my email is B-E-T-T-S macharia at gmail.com b-e-t-t-s macharia gmail.com and i'm also on any social media platform as bets match that is b-e-t-t-s macharia match uh, short form of macharia <laughs> so yeah at bets match you can reach me on any social media platform Great. To our audience today, we will share the link to joining our WhatsApp broadcast. Then we can share Betty's contact and how you can reach to her in case you need any further clarification on this. Betty, we'd like to hear your closing remark for this topic. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's been a lot of talking, speed talk, <laughs> uh, but I hope uh, I didn't rush too much and it was clear for everybody. Um, my three words are the ones I said uh, when you asked me one of the questions. Exposure. Exposure from the bottom up or even the top down. Think of your mom. Exposure. <laughs> um, opportunity. Making sure there are opportunities, again, across board. And support. Support, support, support. Let us all make an effort to, you know, talk to as an individual to our girl relatives uh, and anyone that we know and tell them what opportunities like, especially us who are in technology um, and also as corporates, as governments, as everybody as a whole. Great, we have been given a take home. That is homework for us. We must look at the exposure, the opportunity and the support. The little that you can do at the space that you are at with the resources that you have. That you have. And we all can do something. And that is our lunch and our dessert for today. Thank you so much, Betty. We have learned so much from you today. And we hope to keep linking with you because you are a source of immense knowledge. At Thank you very Capital, much. we promise our customers to offer convenient financial solutions. We are the lending hand. Most of all, our professionalism and customer experience are unmatched in the market. You will find us at our six branches. We have one at Kagen House in town on first floor. Our head office is at CPA Center on third floor. And we have a branch at Pika, Sour House on first floor. We also have our satellite branches in Rungai, Meru, and Keroka. But you would also find us online, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn as Springboard Capital. We have a website www.springboardcapital.co.ke It was a pleasure hosting you today and thank you very much for tuning in. See you next time.